Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the adaptive immune response and immunosuppressants. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing how we activate B cells. So we've discussed the process of affinity maturation, and by the way, I should have written that down at some point. This process of gradually making a population of B cells which have a higher and higher affinity B cell receptor for the antigen is what's known as affinity maturation and we achieve it for a process of natural selection basically by creating a population which have variation in the B cell receptor uh, but they're all reasonably good at binding to the B uh, the antigen, and then uh, setting the criterion that to survive and proliferate, you need to actually get the antigen, and there's limited antigen, so only the best ones are going to get the antigen, and they will survive whilst the less good ones will die, and therefore over time, what will happen is the characteristics of this population will evolve towards having better and better B cell receptors as far as binding to the antigen is concerned, and that's what's known as affinity maturation. Now, this process could go on forever. It's a loop that never ends, basically, a cycle that never ends, okay? But something does cause it to stop. Eventually, one of the B cells in this population gets fed up, basically, and we don't fully understand this, pop this process at all, but one of them seems to get fed up and decides that it's had enough and that it's now good enough to actually make plasma cells, okay? So what's going to happen is one of the B cells in this germinal centre that now must have a pretty good B cell receptor for binding to the antigen differentiates into what is known as a plasma blast, okay? And then what happens is the plasma blast divides and divides and divides and divides to produce an entire population of plasma blasts, okay? So you're going to get multiple plasma blasts, so I'll draw these here. So these at the moment are all plasma blasts. And then all of these plasma blasts are going to then differentiate into plasma cells. Okay, and these plasma cells will leave the lymph node and go into uh, the bloodstream, basically. Okay, so, what do plasma cells now do? Well, plasma cells are factories, basically, which produce antibodies, which is a soluble version of the B cell receptor. Okay, so here is our plasma cell, and you'll notice that it now has a much larger cytoplasm, because it actually now has to produce stuff, and therefore it needs cytoplasm, whereas the naive B and T lymphocytes didn't need cytoplasm, because they didn't have to produce anything. Okay, so these plasma cells are going to start chucking out antibody into the bloodstream. Okay, and when I say chucking out, I really do mean chucking out. They will make a huge amount of antibody. So antibody is basically a soluble form of the B cell receptor. So it's a B cell receptor, but without the bit that anchored it into the membrane. Okay, but it's got the exact same binding site as this cell would have on its B cell receptor. Okay, so it binds to the antigen. So this is the overall result of the humoral uh, adaptive immune response, that you now have a population of plasma cells which are chucking out antibody, uh, which is targeted against this antigen, which will bind to this antigen. Now, what is the point of antibody? Well, firstly, if the antigen that you launched this humoral immune response against was a toxin, okay, I, it was a toxin that was being secreted by uh, the microbe or the pathogen, then what will happen is the antibody will be able to bind to that antigen or that secreted toxin, so let's show this here. So here is our antibody with both its heavy chains and its two light chains here, and it will now bind to this antigen here, which is a secreted toxin, and now that secreted toxin will lose its function. It won't function anymore. So. Uh, toxin neutralization is one of the functions of antibodies. So if the antibody is directed against a toxin, then it will bind to it and neutralize it. Okay, now, what about if the uh, antigen was instead on the surface of a microbe? So if the antigen was a surface antigen, 
Well, basically, the antibody again will bind to this surface antigen. Okay, so let's show our antibody here. These two heavy chains bound together by disulfide bonds, and then the two light chains here bound to the heavy chains by disulfide bonds. Again, the antigen binding site will bind to the antigen here. And now, this is going to help destroy this pathogen. So this pathogen will end up coated in antibody here. And by the way, the abbreviation for antibody is to call it AB. Now, how does the antibody binding to the surface of the pathogen help to kill the pathogen? Well, firstly, it triggers a process known as opsonization. Okay, now this is an excellent key word. Opsonization means that you increase the probability that the pathogen will be phagocytosed. So, if you are a phagocyte, so for instance a macrophage or a neutrophil, your job is to engulf pathogenic cells and digest and break them down. Okay, um, but how are you supposed to recognize this microbe cell? How are you supposed to know which cell is a pathogen cell and which is a normal cell? Because you don't want to phagocytose normal cells. Well, one usually the neutrophils and the macrophage have to um and r over it. So if they've got a cell which they're about to phagocytose, they sort of um and r about it whether this cell really needs to be phagocytosed. But if it's covered in antibody, it's an absolute giveaway basically, and as soon as a phagocyte, such as a neutrophil or a macrophage, sees a cell that is covered in antibody, it will say, fantastic, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to gobble that up instantly. So that's what it means. It means that it increases the probability that um, the microbe will be phagocytosed. And this is because the phagocyte, and let's draw a neutrophil here. So here's our neutrophil, or it could be a macrophage. Let's have a macrophage, in fact. So we'll give it a normal nucleus. The phagocyte will have a receptor for the antibody on its surface. So here is the receptor on its surface, and it will bind to this fixed region down here. And once it's bound to that antibody, it will then start invaginating its membrane around the microbe that it's got hold of, and then it will engulf it and um, into a phagosome, and then digest uh, it within the phagosome. So that's one way uh, that you can increase the chance that this microbe will be destroyed by coating it in antibody. Okay, the other way that antibody can attack uh, microbes is that it can recruit the complement uh, system. So in the acute inflammatory response, you increase the vascular permeability of the capillaries and the post-capillary venules to bring in proteins from the blood. And one of the key proteins that you bring in are the complement proteins, okay? Now, complement proteins again have to decide whether they want to establish complement cascades on the surface of a cell or not, okay? And again, they have to make sure that the cell that they are um, establishing a complement cascade on is actually a microbe cell rather than um, a human cell, okay? And again, antibodies serve as activating molecules for a complement cascade, specifically the classical complement cascade. So, if a, um, a, if a cell is covered in antibody, then it will then get the complement protein setting up the classical complement cascade. Um, and what does the classical complement cascade lead to? Well, three things. Firstly, it leads to the pathogen being coated in a protein known as C3B. So what will end up happening is the pathogen will end up coated in another molecule here, okay, which is C3B. So I'll draw these in green. And C3B is also an opsonin, basically. It's another molecule that if you're coated in, it's a dead giveaway to the phagocyte that you are a pathogen, basically. So path phagocytes also have C3B receptors on their surface. And when these bind to C3B molecules on the surface of a cell, that signifies to the macrophage or the uh, neutrophil that it needs to uh, phagocytose that. Okay, so it, the classical complement cascade is also going to lead to opsonization. Secondly, it's going to lead to the production of C3A and C5A, 
which are what are known as the anaphyla toxins, okay? And both these molecules um, have receptors on the surface of mast cells within uh, tissues. So mast cell is a type of sentinel cell that you have in all of the tissues of your body. Okay, so let's draw one here. Okay, so here is a mast cell. And mast so cells are uh, filled with um, little vesicles that have histamine within them. Okay, so here are these vesicles, whoops, uh, which have histamine within them. So I'll show the histamine as these little turquoise dots here. Okay, um, so basically, if the mast cells release the histamine, that triggers uh, activation of endothelial cells and therefore uh, leads to uh, more uh, inflammatory response, basically. It causes the acute inflammatory response. Okay, so the anaphylatoxins are going to lead to more inflammation, basically. It's going to lead to vasodilatation, increased vascular permeability, and more leukocyte recruitment to the site of inflammation. So it's going to have a positive feedback loop effect, basically. Okay, so these mast cells will have C3A receptors and C3B, sorry, C5A receptors. So this is a C3A receptor, or it could be a C5A receptor. So you'll have C3A receptors, and I'll draw a C5A receptor down here. So this is a C5A receptor. And C3A will come and bind to its C3A receptor, and C5A will come and bind to its C5A receptor on the surface of this mast cell and they'll trigger the degranulation of the mast cells, which releases histamine into the interstitial fluid, which then goes and positively feeds back on the um, inflammatory response. Okay, finally, uh, you also form what are known as membrane attack complexes uh, in the membrane of the um, pathogen. So membrane attack complexes. So let me show you these things, because they're quite interesting. Okay, and membrane attack complexes are often abbreviated to MACs for short. Okay, so if we have our microbe here, what you're going to start producing is these little tubes on the surface of the microbe known as membrane attack complexes, and they're produced out of complement proteins. Specifically, they're mainly made up of C9 proteins. Okay, so here they are. This is the membrane attack complex. And this is a tube in the uh, cell membrane or the membrane of the pathogen. Uh, obviously, if it's um, some uh, structures, it might not have a cell membrane. Okay, but usually the extracellular pathogen will have some sort of cell membrane. Okay, and this membrane attack complex will slide into this cell membrane and destroy the integrity of it. Okay, so things can now freely pass through uh, this membrane, and the thing that the cell should be scared of is water. Water is going to move into the cell by osmosis once you put this membrane attack complex in. And the reason is that the intracellular fluid is far more, um, ha well, it's far more concentrated than the extracellular fluid. The concentration of solute is much higher. So it's hyperosmolar of the, uh, compared to the um, extracellular fluid. So water will move into the cytoplasm via osmosis. Okay, now it can't usually do this because it struggles to get past the phospholipid bilayer because it's a very polar molecule and the phospholipid bilayer has this hydrophobic core um, which is difficult for water to negotiate its way through. Okay, uh, so once you put this pore in the uh, membrane, however, water will move in and this will cause the swelling of this cell as the volume goes up because of the additional water that you're chucking in. And that will eventually lead to the cell bursting. And when cells burst because of osmosis, it's known as osmotic lysis. Okay, and that will destroy the pathogen itself. Okay, so these are the two ways that having antibodies stuck on your surface is going to harm uh, the pathogen. Firstly, it's going to lead to opsonization, and secondly, it's going to recruit the classical complement cascade, which is going to also lead to C3B coating the pathogen and further opsonization 
It's also going to lead to uh, the positive feedback of the inflammatory response. And finally, also, these membrane attack complexes, which directly attack uh, the pathogen and destroy the integrity of its cell membrane. Okay, so that now is the humoral immune response, uh, which is the response that you will initiate to an extracellular pathogen, basically. Okay, and it overall leads to the production of these antibodies by the plasma cells, which will bind to antigens on the surface of the pathogen and also to secreted uh, antigens that could potentially be acting as toxins. Okay, so it's a very, very powerful um, part of the immune response. Okay, so in the next video, we'll turn our attention to uh, a very closely related response, which is the cell-mediated response to pathogens which are living within phagosomes. And then we'll go on to uh, the cell-mediated response for pathogens which are in the cytoplasm of the cell.